Arguably, the greatest risk factor for cardiovascular disease, which can lead to heart attack, stroke, or other cardio crises, is age. The number of heart attacks diagnosed each year was 10 times greater for those aged 65 to 74 than those aged 34 to 44, according to one study. Of course, we can't exactly control our age to avoid heart disease risk. Hence the focus on controlling blood pressure, smoking, and of course, cholesterol to lower risk. However, when it comes to checking our cholesterol level, do we really get the full picture from the standard lipid panel test? Is it enough just to focus on our LDL, AKA bad cholesterol level? Cardiologist and lipidology specialist, Dr. Seth Baum, says there's much more to cholesterol and heart disease risk than just that. Today, he joins us on Vital Signs to talk about the hidden cholesterol carrying particle that's elevated in 20% or more of the population. And most people have no idea. We also look at the cholesterol test that gives a better gauge of your heart disease risk, and we tap into what medical science and common sense can do to manage that risk. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Baum is one of a handful of heart doctors in America who are board certified in clinical lipidology, dealing specifically with lipids like cholesterol and their influence over our health. Dr. Baum is also a professor of medicine at Florida Atlantic University. Dr. Baum, thank you for joining me on Vital Signs. It's good to be here. I'd like to start with just a clarification on a, a point which I know many people confuse, and that's the difference between heart attack and cardiac arrest. My understanding is that the cardiac arrest is more of a, an electrical problem, where, whereas a heart attack is, is more a blood flow problem. And are there general warning signs uh, that, that would apply to both? Yeah, so, so you're correct. Cardiac arrest is basically a worst case scenario. Typically, we think of a cardiac arrest as either a, a lethal uh, rhythm disturbance, like ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, but it is for all intents and purposes, a sudden death. Whereas a heart attack or a myocardial infarction is a situation in which uh, one of the arteries that feeds the heart typically has a plaque that will rupture, a clot will form, uh, obstructing blood flow to a particular territory of the heart muscle, which leads to, uh, if, if it goes on long enough, death of that heart, that area of heart muscle. And ultimately, you could have a cardiac arrest in, arrest in the setting of a heart attack. So you could have both. But there are a number of different things that can cause a cardiac arrest, a uh, heart attack, as I just mentioned, uh, a cardiomyopathy, which is a heart muscle problem, for example, a primary electrical abnormality. There are just electrical disturbances, some of which are genetically determined. I think the bottom line here is uh, you don't want either. You don't want a cardiac arrest. You don't want a uh, myocardial infarction. Since MI is myocardial infarction and ischemic stroke, which would be the equivalent in the brain, are really the leading cause of death in the United States and elsewhere. Uh, I think we should focus probably on those ailments, the, the ones that relate to, to plaque development, no, or atherosclerosis, it'd be good for, I think, everybody to understand how that can develop and how one can mitigate risk of, of developing plaque. I see that there's many different causes of a cardiac crisis and the, the equivalent in the brain, as you mentioned, with the ischemic stroke. But are there general warning signs that people would look for that would tell them it's time to go to the emergency room, it's time to call 911, in the, that, that would like a cover all for these events? So you, you, we have to be careful with that because some people can have very atypical symptoms. So you always, you know, when in doubt, call your doctor or go to the ER, I will say that. The classic symptoms would be chest pressure or pressure rating to the jaw, down the arm, uh, shortness of breath. Um, sometimes you get nausea with this, you have pain in the chest and back, but there are unusual symptoms people can have. I once had a patient who just had belly pain every time he had a cardiac event or another person had wrist pain. So you kind of have to know your own body, anything um, highly unusual, pay attention to it. Again, to me, the ultimate goal is to get to patients before they develop a cardiovascular event and even before, if possible, they develop plaque in the arteries that feed the heart or feed the brain. That would be optimal. And there are a number of 
risk factors that predispose patients to developing plaque and ultimately heart attack or stroke or cardiovascular death. Probably the most important one uh, would be LDL cholesterol. We know that LDL causes plaque. And if you look at, at risk factors from a, what's called a, a population attributable risk standpoint, uh, LDL is the most important, meaning the most people have LDL as a risk factor. And we can do a lot to reduce that risk factor. We have the tools. So the most important risk factor, if we chose one risk factor and said, hey, let's get rid of that one, which is gonna have the greatest impact on reducing heart attack and stroke, it would be LDL. We'll have more from Dr. Baum on heart disease risk in just a moment. If heart disease is affecting you or someone close to you, how is the problem first identified? What kind of treatment or lifestyle changes have been helpful? We welcome you to tell us about it. You can go to epochtv.com and find Vital Science in the Talk Shows tab to leave your comments. On this topic, we know that checking LDL is a mainstay of finding lipid-related heart disease risk. However, studies point to the value of looking beyond LDL to other cholesterol-carrying particles, like very low density lipoprotein, or VDL, which can also lead to plaques forming in the arteries. I was interested to know how these other particles factor into heart disease risk. And I've seen research suggesting that compared to looking at just LDL particles, looking at all the particles that aren't HDL, high density lipoprotein, gives a more reliable measure of, of heart disease risk. Is that something that you've found to be the case? Yeah, so, so, so we've been talking about that for quite a, quite a long time, actually. The difference between LDL cholesterol and LDL particle number we talk about, or APOB, oh as a measure of all the, what are called the atherogenic lipoprotein particles. So to understand that, that differentiation, uh, you have to understand how cholesterol uh, travels around the body and the blood and, and cholesterol is a fat, right? And blood is an aqueous solution or a water-based solution and fat and water don't mix. You can think about salad dressing and, you know, if you have oil and water and vinegar and you shake it up, you get little bubbles of fat. That would be extremely bad in the in the bloodstream. So the body very smartly has these lipoprotein particles that carry cholesterol and triglycerides throughout the blood from one place to another around the body. There are different types of lipoprotein particles. LDL is one of them, but there's also HDL and VLDL and IDL. And there's something else called LP little a that I'm sure we'll talk about. And they all carry cholesterol and triglyceride to a certain extent. Some carry much more cholesterol, some carry less, some carry more triglyceride. And people talk about, you know, uh, erroneously, actually, the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol, good cholesterol being HDL, bad cholesterol, LDL. Cholesterol is the same. It's cholesterol, right? So it's actually these, these particles that are, that are carrying the cholesterol, that, that's, that's where the difference lies. Correct. And those particles that have on their surface a protein called ApoB, are atherogenic. That means they cause plaque, they lead to heart attack and stroke. And which ones do that? Well, LDL is the dominant one. That's why we pay so much attention to it. LP little a is one. VLDL or very low density lipoprotein and, and IDL also carry ApoB. HDL does not. Okay. So the atherogenic lipoprotein particles, as you rightly pointed out, are, are more closely related to non-HDL cholesterol measurement. But the best way to measure it is by measuring ApoB, the number of ApoB lipoprotein particles you have. 